Live long and prosper, my world of rogues. My name is Erin Rogoff, and I would like to welcome you back to my booktube channel. So this entire morning, I have been watching Star Trek and drinking coffee, which is my normal routine for a day off from work. And I wanted to make a video on dystopian favorite novels and honorable mentions. Starting with my favorite book of all time, Gone by Michael Grant. This is my top, top, top favorite. No book comes close to it in the science fiction genre, and I don't think it will ever be beat. I recommend the Gone series highly, and in that series there is Gone, Hunger, Lies, Plague, Fear, and Light, and then in the sequel series there is Monster, Villain, and Hero. Hero has yet to be released, and I can't wait to read it because, well, it's a book, it's my favorite series, and I want to know what happens. Moving on, I thought the series was kind of like Under the Dome by Stephen King, but also a cross between Lord of the Flies and the X-Men, which is a pretty cool crossover if you think about it. The series got mixed reviews, but I think it was one of the best science fiction book sagas I've read recently, and however, it cannot top Star Trek because Star Trek is my ultimate love, besides writing anyway. And I give the series a 10 out of 5 stars. However, I would have preferred a happier ending than the ending that the Gone series did have. Moving on, another book that I loved is Life as We Knew It by Susan Beth Pfeffer. This is another favorite science fiction, dystopian fiction, end of the world, coming of age story. This is another automatic qualifier and it does not have zombies. Just saying. I read The Dead and the Gone, and I finished reading This World We Live In, but I haven't finished reading The Shade of the Moon. I don't know why. It's just, it's getting to be a slow start anyway. And the book itself was supposedly the worst book in the series because it didn't end happy. And the character John, Miranda Evans' brother, he justified trying to attack a girl who he thought should have put out a bit more. So the book is not for anyone under 13 or who does not know about the birds and the bees. Anyway, a shout out to Miss Dina Gidio, my 8th grade English teacher who introduced me to the series. I actually remember it so well. Class was in the library, nobody wanted to sit next to me when we were at the reading tables. I was thought to be a freak, not just because I was obsessed with fencing at that time, but um, that's fighting with a long, thin sword. Um, I'm not actually sure why I was thought of as a freak, really, but um, Miss Judio sat with me, and that was really nice. And then we started talking about books, and she recommended me the Life as We Knew It series. So here we are ten years later, and I'm finally making a booktube video about the entire series. Anyway, the series was underrated in my own opinion, and I was looking for reading material at the time that nobody ever heard about. And with that genre, I mean, not the genre, but with that theme 10 years ago, I was the type of reader to read a book that nobody had ever heard about. And any book that was popular wasn't the book that I read. Like The Hunger Games. I didn't read that 10 years ago in 2009. Anyway, um... The series wasn't the best in reviews, but I really enjoyed it. It was a long narrative about the end of the world, and that just appealed to me for some reason. Do not ask me why. Moving on, another good book is The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. It was made into a movie, and my mom and I are binge-watching it now, and we wish that there was another movie to follow, but uh, The Fifth Wave is an honorable mention because I haven't finished reading the first book or the rest of the series, even though I have all the books in the series. And I actually made a New Year's resolution that I was trying to stick to, and that's where I don't watch the movies or the TV shows until I read all the books. But the thing is, it's not working because The Fifth Wave, I've had the movie since last Christmas, and I only now watched it, and I love it. However, 
One series that I am not going to watch is Shadowhunters until I finish the entire Mortal Instruments series. And to that, I am holding true, even though it is extremely hard to do. And then moving on to the final honorable mention, Lotus and Thorn by Sarah Wilson Etienne. I haven't finished this book yet either, but every summer I spend a week or two with my grandparents in New York. Hi, Grandma! Hi, Grandpa! And a few summers ago, my grandma took me into the city and to Fire Island, which I absolutely loved. I highly recommend everyone goes there. It is a fantastic place. Great hiking trails, fantastic beaches. And then there's this giant pier where a bunch of yachts are. And whenever you go, well, at least whenever I go there, I always say to these yacht owners, oh my gosh, your yacht is amazing. And Several times I've gotten tours of yachts, and I get to see the inside of boats and everything. It's so cool. So I highly recommend it. The people on Fire Island are super nice. Moving on to the books again. Uh, where was I? Um, after Fire Island, a couple summers ago, my grandma took me to a giant bookstore. And needless to say, I walked away with a bunch of books, and Lotus and Thorn was one of them. Anyway, that is it for today. I'm going to be reading more science fiction novels and fan fictions right now over another cup of coffee. So if you like this video, subscribe to my booktube channel below to get more videos like this. Hit that like button in the face and have a great day everyone. Live long and prosper.